One of the most underrated players in this draft class has had a pretty interesting path to the draft. So let's see how Trent McDuffie got here. Now let's Straight out of good old Westminster, California, it was obvious that Trent was born to play football, but the road wasn't all that easy. When he was only in 5th grade, his brother Tyler passed away, and so ever since then he has always been motivated to carry on his late brother's legacy. At St. John Bosco, Trent started 3 of his 4 years on one of the best teams in high school football as he was able to lead them to 12 or more wins each and every season that he started. Throughout his time at St. John, Trent kept improving little by little, and so as a senior, he was able to make the All-American Bowl as a top 20 cornerback recruit in the country. All things considered, it was not that much of a surprise that schools like Washington, Florida, and Alabama were all interested. Since Trent had dozens of Power 5 D1 offer, choice was far from easy, but after developing a good relationship with the secondary coach in Jimmy Lake, and upon that, the fact that his high school coach felt like it was the right fit, my man decided to become a Husker out there in good old Washington. The day that Trent arrived was a special one to say the least, as he was greeted with a number 22 jersey hanging on his locker. The number held a lot of meaning for Trent, as it was the same one that his brother wore when they both played together as kids. It seemed to be a sign that he was in the right place, and although he was a thousand miles away from his home, the distance seemed to shrink little by little. As Trent would say, when I first got there and I saw my locker, it was a feeling that I knew that I chose the right place to be. To be honest, I don't really know if there's a much better way to start off your time on a brand new team, and so now it's just up to him to do his thing on the football field. Well, it didn't take all that long for Trent to get his opportunity, as he was able to take the starting role after only three weeks. Even though he didn't play the entire year, his 45 tackles, two pass deflections, two forced fumbles, and interception proved that he was no joke in only his first season with the team. Although he didn't gain any accolades for his surprisingly good performance, Trent had already established himself as one of the best young cornerbacks in all college football. Fast forward to his sophomore year, and although he wasn't able to do much in the virus shortened season, his 14 tackles, forced fumble, and pick were at least proof enough that my man could still do his thing. Anyways, going into his junior year, and coming off of a second team all pac 12 nod, Trent wanted to take his game up a notch in what was likely his last season with the Huskers. I would say 35 tackles, 6 pass deflections, and a sack were not too bad a way to take his game to the next level. Not only was he just first team all pac 12, but third team all American as he solidified himself as one of the best cornerbacks in football, and now was looking to take his talents to the next level as he declared for the NFL draft. Byman Trent is not just an incredible athlete, but a leader as his former cornerback pal and Aza Turner would say. Not just a leader for the cornerbacks, but the entire defense, as he has a unique confidence that makes him a great addition to any defense in the league. Another former teammate in Sam Tamani talked about how Trent and some other studs on the defensive side were not just beasts, but helped everyone play their best football. And that's simply what a leader does. A true leader brings out the best of those around him, and it's why they are so important in a sport where you put your heart out on the field each and every time you play. Nonetheless, Trent may be a great leader, but first and foremost, he is one of the most talented quarterbacks in the draft. Even though he is only just under 5'11 and 190, he uses every single ounce about as good as any corner in college football. Not only is he just great in man coverage, but in the limited time that he has had to switch it up, he is also pretty dang good in zone. Trent just has great play speed, and so it seems like he can go toe to toe with some of the best wide receivers out there. But what really elevates him is his insane football IQ, as it seems like he is always able to make a play and just be in the right place at the right time, no matter if it's in the passing or rushing game. Unlike a lot of his peers, Trent is extremely willing to put his all out there against it seems like anyone, whether it's someone rushing the ball downhill or a wide receiver across the middle. Not many, if any, quarterbacks could say the same thing no matter how talented they are in the passing game. And that is one of the main things that sets my man apart. He may not be one of the biggest names in a draft class that has a decent bit of talent on the defensive side, but he sure as heck plays like one. And although it likely doesn't mean that he will go first round, whenever he gets his shot, I'm sure he'll take full advantage of it. What do you guys think? Is Trent one of the best defenders in the draft? Or does he still have a long way to go? Let me know in the comments section down below. Anyways, Trent McDuffie is one of the most underrated players in a draft class with a lot of uncertainty. And so it will be interesting to see what he can do on the next level. Decide to run. I don't know why it took him that long. Look out to Jamari Joyner. Balls on the deck. Washington may have it. Thanks for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment down below the stuff you want next. But anyway, see you all soon, and peace out.